everybody once again. Well, yeah, I want to thank John and, and the whole crowd for inviting me back here again for the fourth time. Uh, they asked me after the last time I was here, is there something else I can do? <laughs> And I, I was going to do uh, another lecture on magic and the history of magic. But then I thought, wait a minute, it'll be more fun if instead of just doing magic and lecturing on it, let me show you how to do some of these things, simple tricks with everyday objects that you can do at home for when your kids or grandkids visit. Okay? So feel free to take notes. If anybody needs uh, paper and pencil, maybe they have some more papers over there. I've got some paper if anybody needs some. But take notes, because you're not going to remember all the things we're doing this morning. So pick out, pick out your favorite one or two tricks remember to do at home. Now, let me start off by saying these are not all magic tricks. These are things that you can do with everyday objects. And depending on how you present them, to your grandkids. It can either be a stunt or a science demonstration or a trick, you know, or a magical kind of trick. Watch this, you know. Or it could be a bet or a challenge or simply a game, a puzzle, or an amusement or diversion on some rainy day, you know. So depending on how you present any of these things you're going to see today, it is, everything is going to be magical. Now the thing to remember is that, you know, we've all seen stage magicians and um, one of the most annoying things about watching a stage mag magician is if they are too arrogant, right? As they get up there and they say, basically they're saying, look what I can do. I can do this and you can't. You know, or I know how to do this and you don't. Well, that's no fun at all. So when you're going to present any of these tricks that you see today, think that you are not doing the trick. The object is the magical thing. Like if I do something with this pencil, it's not me doing the magic with the pencil. It's the pencil has certain talent. And the pencil has magical qualities. Look at what this pencil can do, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so we're going to start right off with everybody who has one, take out a dollar bill from your pocket. Or if you have a five dollar bill, it's even better. It'll be easier to see the face of Abe Lincoln. So take a dollar or a five dollar bill out of your pocket. And if you have a 50 or a hundred, just pass it forward. <laughs> 20 will do. <laughs> But a dollar bill with George Washington or a five dollar with Abe Lincoln perfectly. Okay, so what you're going to do is if you have a dollar or a five dollar, it doesn't matter. You're going to make a sharp crease or a fold right through the middle of George or Abe's eye. A sharp crease through one of the eyes. Well, it will be even because we're going to make a fold through one eye and then we're going to make another fold through the second eye. As I do it, a fold that's even, it doesn't go through an eye. No, it shouldn't be even then like this. It should go right through the eye. That's the important point. And then once you've done one eye, make a parallel crease right through the middle of the other eye. This one little trick is going to be the price of admission for today. If you remember nothing else, remember this trick. We're almost done there. We've got two parallel creases. All right? The, the major part of the work is done. <laughs> so then, those of you who know origami, all you're going to do is you're going to 
press in the middle of these creases to make a little valley, you know, with your fingernail. So what you will be able to do then is press the two creases together so they're touching. A little tricky for those of us who are older than 60 years old. So a crease through one eye, a crease through the other eye, then push the middle of it and fold the two creases together. And then open up your dollar or five dollar bill. Don't fully undo it, but just open it up a little bit. We doing so good so far? Yeah, so then what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold the top corners with your fingers and look at the face and then slowly turn the face up towards you and watch him smile <laughs> then turn it down towards the other direction and watch him frown is it working Yeah, you don't have to have it loose like this. You could pull it apart a little bit and up and down. If you're not quite getting it, but your neighbor does, have your neighbor show you. Oh, there's a question here. How much have I done this in front of the kids? For example, I was on an airplane ride and the kid with, with a family in the row of seats in front of me, the kid was crying his head off. So I, I tapped the mother on the shoulder and I said, look at this. And I made the fold and I made up a story, to make up a story of George Washington. He, he, was, he was frowning because his wooden teeth hurt a lot. You know, so I made the George frown. And then, but Martha gave him a new set of teeth and boop, he's smiling. <laughs> and the kids stopped crying. <laughs> so I was a hero <laughs> on that plane. Okay, so I, I call that Smiling George or Smiling Abe. You can make a story about Abe Lincoln, you know, being happier. Abe used to tell a lot of stories. Okay, here's another one. With the dollar bill or the five, it doesn't matter. I'm going to make a Z fold. This is a little bit trickier. Let me see if I could show you this. But this is a follow up trick to that one. So, what I've done is I made a Z fold like this two folds with little overlap on e either side. <coughs> Z. So when it's, when it's folded up, you have something to hold on here and something to hold on the other side. And you don't have to perfect all these tricks right now. I'll just be showing you how to do these things and you can practice at home. So don't worry if you haven't got it completely. So you've made a Z fold and then what you do is you take two pins. What do you call these pins? Paper, pa paper clips. That's what. <laughs> oh dear. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one paper clip and uh, I'm going to put it in one of the folds and clip it to the other side. Have the whole thing clip? Most of it. <laughs> and I'll, I'll do the same thing with the other clip. You can watch here. So there's a, there's a section that's closed, right? Yeah. So I'm going to put the clip into that section that's closed and then clip it to the other side, the unclosed side.
a little hard to describe, but you put it into the fold and then clip it to the other edge of the dollar bill. To the back side. To the back side. Yeah. Front side or back side? <laughs> I need an assistant up here to describe these things. Uh, okay, so you could you can make up another story about this. Uh, I've done it where it's Robin Hood shooting an arrow right through the middle of the sheriff's arrow. Or another story is I, I tell the story of a two trap two flying trapeze artists. You know, one is the catcher, one's the flyer, and the flyer swings and lets go, and the catcher catches her in midair. And this is what happens. I hold the ends, and I'm going to pull them apart. And if it works, the paper clips whoop, connect in midair. I'll do it over the table here. <laughs> they go flying through the air like the trapeze. Wait a minute. I have, I, I have a cousin who's a physics professor, and I showed this to him, and he couldn't figure out why it does that. Can you share any paper um, I've got some paper clips here. Uh, it, it, it doesn't matter, though. You want to you get the, um, when you put the paper clip on, make sure it's on the fold. Yeah. I mean the... Somehow, want to see it again? Yeah. And it goes flying. <laughs> Whoops, and it's connected. So I'm not going to pass out these paper clips because there's too many of you, but try this at home. You make a Z fold and then two paper clips and they'll go flying through the air. Uh, let's see. Let me do this a little bit. There you go. It goes right there. You're covering how much? You got the whole bill clip? Here is a prototype that this gentleman has here. So after the show is over, he will show you how this is set up. No. There you go. <laughs> OK, moving on. Dollar bills. Oh, how about one more thing with a dollar bill, since we're on to that. Uh, you take two cups or glasses. And this could, be, this could be a challenge to somebody. You say, see if you can put a dollar bill between these two glasses and have another glass balanced on the dollar bill. See if they could figure that out. Yeah, you can stand up in the back if you want to see this. Anybody know how to do this one? Fill the glasses with water, that makes it even messier. <laughs> the glasses are farther apart like this, and you place the dollar bill between the two glasses in order to balance a third glass on top. The three glasses have to be identical in size, right? Uh, not necessarily. No. You know. The base of the top has to be the same distance. Well, let me tell you how to do this, so we'll keep moving here. You make an accordion fold. Let me do this for a second here. You make an accordion fold, fold it again. You fold it again. Fold it as many times as you can fit with a dollar bill here. Yeah. You've made an accordion fold like this. Then when you put it between the two glasses, you know, I only folded it twice here, but uh, you know, more folds, the stronger it is, and it, it could hold a glass full of water. 
It's not balanced quite right here, but that's the idea. You could have a glass full of water balanced on the dollar bill between two glasses. You could. You could have water in there to make it a good basin, yeah. to make it seem more challenging. <laughs> okay, so three tricks with the dollar bill. Ha have I published a book with this, these tricks? No, I haven't, though if anybody knows a publisher, <laughs> let me know. I've, I've got about a hundred of these, and I'd love to have a book for, specifically for grandparents to entertain their, their kids. I would like to do it, but uh, yeah, I need some sponsorship. Okay, I'm going to show you a trick. As long as I've got this accordion fold, I'm going to show you a trick that I'm not going to tell you how to do. <laughs> With a dollar bill and a pencil. A real pencil. I need somebody who's strong, got strong fists, to come up and help me out with this one for a second. Anybody? Here it is. Thank you, sir. My lovely assistant. <laughs> so what you're going to do is you're going to hold the ends of the pencil like this, fists up. Make sure that it's a real pencil. There's no break in there. There's no. It's not sawed in half or anything. Right. Step a little back. Thank you, Will. Not sure if this is going to work, but let's see. I'm going to try to break the pencil with the dollar bill. Accordion fold. I do it with an accordion fold. Usually, I don't tell somebody first how I do it. I just take the dollar bill and I, you know, I go like this. And, oh, that doesn't work. But then I take the accordion fold. Don't try this at home. It takes. 50 years of practice. <laughs> you ready? Hold nice and tight. Oh. It worked. Look at that. So you may keep that souvenir. <laughs> now, if you told us how it worked, you might get a donation to help publish your book. <laughs> Come see me after the show. <laughs> OK, here's a challenge. I've got two teacups and an empty soda bottle. The challenge is to get the soap can into the second teacup, but without touching the can and without touching the teacups. Any thoughts? Hmm. Oh, that's kind of neat. Raise the table. So that's a, too much of an effort that I want to give it. <laughs> You cannot touch either cup or the can. With anything. With anything. Some people think, well, I'll take a, a, a knife or something, but without using any other objects either. Levitation. Levitation. <laughs> Special kind of levitation. How, how do you do it? Suction. That's interesting. The opposite of suction. Blowing it. Watch how easy this is. You, you blow straight down between the, uh, the teacup and, and the can. Whoop. I even put too hard. Wow. <laughs> Let's get a couple of people up here to try it. Who wants to try? We've got two cans and two cups. Step right up. See how easy it is. I don't want a hard one. You don't have to blow too hard at all. Blow nice and easy. You can stay a little farther away from it. Yeah, like that. Perfect. Yeah, you gotta get the right distance and then. Oh! 
<laughs> one more time, one more time. Very close, very good. Yay. Another way you could do it is, is by holding it up, and if you really blow hard, you know, it could go, it, it could go a real distance. Oh, that, that was terrible. <laughs> well, that's the idea. <laughs> I call that one blow cup. <laughs> okay. Next. <laughs> Don't throw these away. I got lots of them. Save these up for the rainy day. I call it I call it this the uh, the, the toilet paper roll bounce. So what you do is you get your grandkids lined up, three, four, or five of them, as, as many as you want, and each one has one of these toilet paper rolls. And it's, it's not good to do a challenge because that means there's always going to be a loser, and that's no fun for a grandkid, right? So instead of a challenge to see who's the winner, you can time it. Like, okay, in 60 seconds, I'll time it, and in 60 seconds, let's see how many times you drop it and it lands back up on its side. Oh, did it. And they start to figure out how high to drop it, or how low, or maybe at a little bit of an angle. These are very bouncy tables. But when, when they get it and it lands on top, everybody counts one, you know, two, three. And how many times in 60 seconds they could get it to stand up and create a family uh, record and then see if they could break it again next time I try it whenever they want. So let's get somebody up here to try it. Let's get uh, two or three or four people. Stand right up. See how easy it is. Come right up. Come right up. All at once. <laughs> Oh, okay. You're the demonstrator. Here, you're going to do two at once. See what happens. Oh, there's one. I've had it actually where I've dropped three like this. And sometimes I've had two bounce right up and sometimes none. So you never know. Oh, there's two. Perfect. We have a champion here. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> Here's something else to do on a rainy day. Juggle. Now, those of you who know how to juggle with three balls, that's fine. But I find it's a lot easier when you take a produce bag which they're free at the supermarket. And I have the little tiny rubber bands that you could buy at the craft store or something like that. What you do is you blow it up, squeeze the ends, you know, blow some more in there, twist the ends, and if you're very Agile, you could tie it off like a balloon, but I, I find it's a little difficult, so I take the little rubber band, wrap it around the ends, and you've got the sweetest juggling, floating. Look at how slow that floats. Any kid can juggle with two of these things in the air. Any kid could juggle with three, and they're so impressed with themselves. <laughs> Trash bag. Is that fun or what? And, and it's good exercise. 
And I, I keep some of these behind the couch in my living room, and you could, you know, you do your aerobics, you, know, you could side to side, you know, all this. You could get some good exercise juggling with these things for five minutes, really. <laughs> okay, I'm just sort of moving right along here, right? Um, let's do a magic trick. Uh, I've got three books here. I don't need to show you the titles because then you'll start choosing. Can you see this uh, grid here? Yeah. 16 squares. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, blah, 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 16. Uh, so let's see. OK, I, we're going to choose some numbers here randomly. I need somebody to call out one of these numbers. Well, Wait a minute. <laughs> I heard lots of, OK, yes. 12. 12. So you choose a number, and then the rows with that number you eliminate. Give me another number. Seven. Seven. So eliminate that row, and horizontally. Another number. Two. Two. Eliminate those two rows. Another number. It's just 13 that's left? So we've got four numbers, a 2, a 7, a 12, and a 13. They add up to what? This is 25, 26, 27, 34. Okay, I got three books here. Uh, I need somebody, anybody, to take uh, either one of these books in one hand and another book in another hand, either one. Okay, hand me one of those books. Okay, that leaves you with what? What is the book? Mark Twain, look up page 34. And don't tell me anything about it. Um, magicians always like to say, you know, what's the first word or what's the first? Let's go to the bottom of the page for a change. Look at the, the bottom sentence and read it just to yourself, but not out loud. Uh, OK, this is a mental telepathy test, <laughs> as well as choosing a, some random number here. Mark Twain, I love Mark Twain, he's my favorite author. You're on page 34? Yeah. Bottom of the page? Yeah. Ouch! Yes, for God's sake. What's it say? It says, ouch. Really? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Does it really? It says, ouch, and jumped back. But the book, the, but the, book the, the, the selection of your books must be the key to this. The number is the key. Well, right there, no, but you just couldn't take three books at random and do this one. Sure. Is it always going to be 34? Okay, here's the trick. I said the word ouch, and the, the last sentence there is, is what? Ouch. So, but you had said that. Yes, I had said it first. The last sentence is, I was warm and soft and naked, so he says ouch and jumped back. <laughs> okay, here's the trick. I'm going to. Mark Twain talking about naked something? That, that's unusual. That, that's uh, Life on the Mississippi is a great book. Okay, without the, uh, the book test, that's a, it's a combination of two magic tricks. That's a book test, which I'm not going to tell you how I did the mental telepathy thing, Nate. But here, it's always going to come out to 34. You make this grid, no matter what numbers they choose. It could have been the 10 and the 8 and the 3 and the, 
there's always four numbers left and they always add up to 34. So here's how you could do that. You could, you know, write the grid on a piece of paper and have your, your kids uh, call out the numbers and all this. But meanwhile, you've written the number 34 on a piece of paper and hidden it under his dinner plate or, or anywhere you want. So that's your prediction is 34. And so you get a, a supposedly random number, 34. Oh, who's got something under their dinner plate? And everybody looks, nobody has something except the kid opens up the paper and it says 34. Yeah. <laughs> They'll love it. Love it. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a fun one. All right. Moving right along here. Okay. I've got three coins here. I've got a penny, a nickel, and a dime. Oh, no. Here's, okay, here's the story. Ben's mom had three kids. One kid was named Penny. The other kid was named Nikki. And the third kid was named what? Dimey? Yeah. Dimmy? Dim? <laughs> yeah, the third kid was named Ben. Ben's mom had three kids. So that's a riddle for you. And the way you do this, normally, with a, if you do this with a kid especially, you have them put their hand out. So they get, uh, they focus on the coins, which gets their mind not hearing what you're saying. One kid was named Penny, give them the coin. Second kid was named Nikki. And when they see the dime, they immediately think of dimey, diamond. They don't think of, Ben's mom had three kids. It's Ben. All right. Oh, okay. Here's another thing you could do with a balloon, which is a lot of fun. This is the singing balloon. Take any ordinary balloon and a hex nut. It can be a small one like this, or medium size, or big size. A hex nut. It's a nut that has one, two, three, four, five, six sides. That's, that's hexy. Put it into the balloon. Then, of course, you could tie it off, but I'm not going to it off and you can see the the hex nut in there so you get it rotating and it starts to sing a lot of fun <laughs> especially when you get a whole a whole room of kids with balloons and it sounds like a Beehive. Yeah. Well, it looks like those motorcycles with the sphere that you see yeah. at circus circus type show. Yeah, exactly. To do that, you put a penny in. Put a penny in there, then blow it up and do the same thing. Make it rotate, and the penny, it doesn't make the sound, but you could see it, like the motorcycle in the circus, which is really kind of fun. Uh, that reminded me of another trick. What was the other trick? Uh, Let's get on to some cards quickly. Uh, let's see, we don't need these. If you have a hat or a plate, something like this, you can challenge somebody, say give them 10 cards. And challenge them to drop the card so it lands on the plate. Face See, down. 
it doesn't matter face down or face up, but just so it lands on the plate rather than on the table or on the floor. This is a good thing to do on the floor, put a, a plate or a hat on the, on the floor, on the rug of your living room, and demonstrate like this. Hold it you know, a couple of feet above and say, see how many out of 10 cards you could make drop onto the plate. And they'll start going like this. Darn it. Oh, well, there's one. Usually you don't, you hardly get any. But there's a trick to it, of course. <laughs> so you're, you're holding the card like this. But then when you demonstrate, hold it like this. And you can even give it a little bend sometimes. What it does, it catches the column of air. Whoops. I caught it on my little sweaty finger here. It'll go straight down every time. You know, 10 out of 10, you win. <laughs> so I call that drop cards. Very creative with these titles, huh? <laughs> Okay, um, boy, we've had toilet paper rolls, we have this and that, we've had, um, oh, coin flick. Let me show you the coin flick. Normally when I do this with smaller groups, I pass out the coins and the cards and all this, but I'll just keep moving along here. So what you do with this, and again, is not a magic trick, this is more of a stunt. Meaning it's, it has no meaning to it. <laughs> it's just fun to do. So you balance a card on your finger, uh, doesn't matter which finger, index finger, middle finger. Which do I use, my right hand, my left hand? I'll use my left hand, my balance. the coin on the finger. I mean, I bounce the card on the finger and then the coin in the middle and you flick the, the card and the coin stays. I had a little trouble bouncing it there. I've got Parkinson's. I was diagnosed uh, five years ago with Parkinson's. There's a slight little tremor. So use your, use your good hand. But all you do, again, you balance it on the finger, then place the coin, uh, a quart, it could use any coin, a penny, but a quarter is good because it has some weight to it. Balance it right on the center there. And the way that this works very effectively is don't have the card facing out the long way, have it facing across you like this. And what you're gonna do, you're gonna flick the corner the corner of the card and it goes flying out and leaves the coin right on your finger. It's, it's amazingly satisfying. <laughs> it's hard to describe it any other way. I mean, it looks like nothing, but when you do it to yourself and it goes Whoop! and the coin is still there, it just feels great. So I, I call that the, uh, the coin flick. Oh, here's a, just a silly little thing. Uh, put your palm up and blow a hard uh, stream of air into your palm. Feels a little bit cool. Now you're going to just bring your mouth closer to it and you give a little and it feels hot. Hot, cold. <laughs> Kids love that stuff. <laughs> uh, let's see. So I'll balance the circuit. Oh, okay. Here's another thing you can do with a soda can. I won't demonstrate it here, but I'll just tell you how to do it. Have an empty soda can. Put in just a little bit of water or liquid so it covers the bottom inside the can. And you can see that there's a lip on the bottom of the can. What you're able to do with that little bit of water, which is now at the bottom here, 
you're able to stand, you can balance this cup just like that. It stays like that. Then you can even hit the top of it and it'll just do 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 and balance at an angle. So just a little bit of liquid in the bottom of a can and then balance it. Amazing. <laughs> you want another math and magic trick? <laughs> uh, no. I think I, I, I just love these silly kinds of things because you never know when you're going to need something silly. Uh, and people in the circus, you know, you go out and do a circus act and then you're sitting around backstage for the rest of the show just hanging out and playing tricks with each other. And uh, You're always sharing tricks and it's just a fun thing to do. Not for kids, but for grown-ups. Like us. Let me make a prediction. Well, let me do another. Well, I've got these books here. Uh, let's say we're rolling uh, some dice. Who wants to roll the dice? Raise your hand. Okay, uh, stay right there. You have an imaginary die in your hand. So it has six numbers on it, right? And you roll it on an imaginary table in front of you. <laughs> what number is on top? Five. Five. Somebody else, roll a, a, a die. What do you get? One. A five and a one. Somebody else? Four. A five, a one, and a four. Five and one and a four. Let's reverse that to be four, one, five. And now we subtract. Who's good at math? So what do we got here? Zero. Let's reverse this. Nine, nine, zero. So this is minus this. Let's add these. We got a nine, 18, 1089. Might as well do this book test again. Pick a book, any book. All right, what is it? War of the Worlds. War of the Worlds, oh, great. Uh, I don't know how many pages that has. Go to page one, 108. And look at the ninth line down and read it to yourself, not out loud. You got it? Yeah. H.G. Wells. Martians, War of the Worlds, Martians. Uh, very funny, laughing, amused. Cheerful Of the Martians. Che Cheerful Martins, what's it say? Cheerful Hooty from the Martians. There we go. <laughs> Another mental test here, telepathy. <laughs> All right, here's how this works. Get any three-digit number. You know, I just had some fun having you imagine with, with, the, with the dice. But any three-digit number, reverse it and subtract. Reverse that total and add, and it's always 1089. So then you make prediction any way you want. Again, it could be a piece of paper under a plate or, you know, when they're not looking, you put a piece of paper that says 1089 in some kid's pocket and they don't even know it or make, make that appear any way you want. Or if you want, I didn't know, you know, what book you were gonna choose. So I got these three books here, but that's a whole different trick. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's a whole different ball game. How are we doing? Let's see. Uh, boy, we had a lot of stuff here. 1089, potatoes. Dollar bills, coins, cards, mental magic. Um, oh, let me show you one more thing before I get to the big finish. Have you ever wanted to pull a tablecloth under, a, <laughs> especially at Thanksgiving when dinner is over? <laughs> okay. I'm going to show you how to do this. I'm going to make it hard to do. I mean, hard, harder to set up. Let's see. Let's do it this way. Three glasses, maybe another plate. Maybe another. Yikes. <laughs> you don't have to use the eggs. <laughs> but what I often do also is uh, sometimes I fill the cups with water. Let me make it more. I could get somebody to try this, but. I know you're going to film this when I miss it and it all goes flying everywhere, right? <laughs> no pressure. I've done this a hundred times, but there's always that moment just before you do it. It's like, is it going to work? Uh, okay, let's see. All right. Okay, you can put the camera down and you're going to come up here and help me out. Seriously, seriously. Come on up, come on up. I'll, I'll talk you through it. So first of all, you want to have a, a, a cloth that has no hem on it. Because if there's a hem here, it'll catch the plates and go flying. So nice and thin, has, has no hem on it. Um, and it's not a, a woven thing that'll catch and stretch. This is just a simple. Then the more weight, the better, because it's inertia. There's one key. There's one key. Yeah. I don't, I've never seen. I've seen it. I, I'm just deducing it. One key to your success, and I, I, I know what would make it fail. Okay. Just by watching what you did. What? Well, your pull was downward to keep friction, as opposed to most people would go straight out. Very good. Create more friction. Perfect. Most people either would go straight out or they'd go up and yeah. down. And that up creates a pocket of air, and that's going to catch. Yeah. So what you're going to do is you're going to grab good fist with the corners of the table, uh, tablecloth. And you're going to pull straight down and fast, not slow. If you go slow, it brings the place with you. So grab the corner, grab the corners, and when you're ready, you pull straight down to the floor. Just in case, straight down and fast. Yep. You can do it. Straight and fast. Excellent. Okay. We have a few more minutes. I, I have uh, a last thing to show you, but any questions before I get on to the uh, finale here? Can you read? How about one good card trick? One good card trick. Something that really would impress grandkids, like pull out a deck of cards, or, you know, pick, pick, you know, like pick out a card or something, you know. Something for your Tuesday. 
Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, this. <coughs> something simple doesn't take any sleight of hand. Uh, simplest thing I could think of. It doesn't matter. Shuffle the cards up. But you, you get a look at what the top card is. So after, after they shuffle, they say, see, pretty well mixed. Meanwhile, you're glancing at what the top card is. Let's say it's uh, the eight of clubs. So just get a glimpse of what the top card is and shuffle it again if you have to, but keeping that card on top. And then, so remember. What is it? The eight of clubs? So that's what I have to remember, the top card. Then have them cut the deck in half. And once they do that, you take the other half, the bottom half, put it on top of that, but crosswise to mark it. As you say, let's just mark where you cut there so we can remember where you cut to. And then this is called a, a time uh, diversion where you say, okay, we've just marked where you cut the deck. Uh, you mix the cards. Uh, I have no idea what you cut to. You have no idea what you cut to, et cetera, et cetera. So you're, it's a, a time diversion here. So they forget how they cut it. But meanwhile, what you've done is that all you have to do is pick up the top part and say, okay, turn over your card and look at it. And that card is what? The eight of clubs. So they know what it is. You, you, don't, you can read their mind. It's the it's black card, it's spades or clubs. Clubs is uh, eight, you know, whatever. Or you can make a prediction. You could, you know, you can make a prediction of what they cut to, write it on a piece of paper, eight of clubs, fold it up, put it on the table, say, okay, let's see what you cut to. Take the top part off, they, oh, they lift the eight of clubs and they unfold your paper, it says eight of clubs. So let me go over that again. Let's put the eight of clubs on the top. So the eight of clubs is on the top. They cut the deck in half. So there's the eight of clubs. You mark where it is by putting the other deck right there. Still, that's the eight of clubs. Okay, you know, time direction, misdirection here. What is it? Where'd you cut to? And it's the eight of clubs. Simple but very, uh, they can't figure it out. They can't figure it out at all. Well, the diversion, I remember getting a magic kit at 10 years old. And I remember the, if I remember correctly, because I, I like magic, pattern is a key word. It's that diversion that you, the magician talking and keeping the mind of the audience engaged in actually other than what maybe your hands are doing. Right, so they forget what you have done or what they have done. It's, it's, it's a good uh, time misdirection. All right, last thing. Here's what you could do with soap bubbles. Uh, just have a time for a few tricks here. I do a whole show with soap bubbles, a whole circus with tightrope walking soap bubbles, bubbles that fly into the air and burst into flame all kinds of things. Uh, all you need is some bubble juice, which you could just get at the store, and a straw. First thing I'll do here, I've got a jar, a little water here, water spray to get it wet. I have a little plastic stand at the bottom here, and I'm going to make a long-lasting bubble. in the jar. I've had a bubble sitting in a jar on my shelf for two months. Sometimes it lasts a few hours, sometimes a few minutes, sometimes days, uh, depending on the humidity outside. And the jar protects it from the dust and from bubbles' natural predators. Kids. <laughs> uh, and, you know, you, could, you wake up and it slowly, slowly, slowly changes its colors. Normally bubbles last only a few seconds in the air, right? Shimmering colors, but you get to study a bubble like that when it's in a jar. 
then what is the little stand inside of it? Uh, that's a little plastic, uh, little plastic champ, cup. little champagne cup. You know. Uh, let's see. Let's. Then again, all you need is uh, juice, a straw, and, and a bubble wand, and you can start. You can make a bubble caterpillar. Little breakdancing caterpillar. <laughs> you could make um, carousel. Let's see if I could get this carousel going here. Cute. <laughs> so you could do, you could make bubble villages and bubble dome villages. You know, get get a uh, cookie tray wet, and then pass out straws to all the kids, and they'll start blowing these bubble domes on the cookie tray and domes on top of each other. And uh, one last thing here. This is a little device. Uh, it makes smoke. It's the kind of smoke that they use uh, in, in theaters. It's a fog machine, a little miniature fog machine that a toy company puts these out, but I adjusted it. I drilled a hole and put in these pipes and put in a funnel and so I could direct the, um, the smoke. Uh, let's see. Volcano. <laughs> and all kinds of other tricks. One last trick with the bubbles is um, I'll show you how to blow a bubble inside of a bubble. So get a pretty big one, then get your mouth close to the equator and give a little puff. Whoops. Whoops. Do it this way. <laughs> Can you see? So, fun with bubbles. So I'm hoping that you can go home, do at least one of these tricks. Remember we started off with the dollar bill tricks, smiling George and smiling Abe, and we went on from there. So you are not the magician, the objects do all the magic. Thanks for coming everybody. Well, I, I have something else I could do, too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and next week, we'll be talking about the family in part two. Alex will be here. For those of you that are part one, I think you'll find part two.